Christmas plays coming up. Uh, start telling everybody, start inviting everybody. I'd like to see a full house for that evening. So let's let everybody know. That's a good time to ask your friends or your family that is unsaved. Sometimes that's the easier way to get them into the house of God is to get them to a Christmas play. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 28. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandments greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is, is, there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all thy heart, and with all, thy, uh, with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifice. And when Jesus saw that he answered, dis- when, and when Jesus saw that, he answered discreetly, and said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that doest ask him any questions. Now we know that the the scribes were trying Jesus' patience. They were always putting tests on him. They were always doubting him. They was always trying to get him to doubt himself. Nothing's changed in that spirit today. If anybody this week had a spirit to come against you to get you to doubt yourself, anybody to get you to doubt what you're doing, what you're supposed to be doing, what you have done, Maybe come to you and said you've made a mess out of that. Hmm. Well, the Lord began to a- answer the question, and, 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 he, and he answered with the commandments. He answered with what God had, told him, uh, had sent and, and, and told him of all things about loving the Lord God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, uh, 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 the, that this ought to be the first commandment. And then he goes on and says, you ought to love everybody else like you love yourself. Whew. That gets tough sometimes, don't it? But I like what the scribe did. Instead of coming back with some arrogant remark, instead of coming back with some philosophical equation that wouldn't make sense for anybody, He repeats what the Lord says. But there is a change that takes place during the time that he is repeating it. He gets fired up. He says to Jesus, well, Master, has thou said? And he begins to repeat there is the the truth, he said, that there is only but one God. And there is none other but he. And we ought to love him with our heart, all of our understanding, with our soul, with all of our strength. And we ought to love our neighbor as ourself. And all this is more than a burnt offering or sacrifice. Now remember... These folks are the ones that are having issues making the transformation from the law to grace. They're the ones that are having the issue. Uh, In fact, he began to to ask Jesus the question so that he would kind of be like uh, Brother Aaron was this morning and stumble. (laughs) Sorry, brother. I'm glad you could assist me this morning. So he he started out with a mission of, I'm going to tear this man down because he really didn't believe in Jesus or the Son of God. But as he gets into it and Jesus spoke, uh, spoke the truth, and we all know that the truth, 
Praise God. And, 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 and as he began to quote what Jesus already said, he begins to have a difference that comes upon him because he gets steered up and he's like, man, we got to get into this. We, 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 we got we to gotta love God and we got to tell everybody else and we got to show everybody else how that we love God and we, we've, gotta, we've got more to do. We got to come with understanding. He begins to even uh, take it further than Jesus took it. And Jesus going, whoo, Go. And the Bible said that Jesus answered him discreetly and said, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Why would he answer him that way? Because remember that this guy is a scribe, and a scribe is a, a scholar of the Jewish law who studies nothing but the law. A scribe was one that was, they, they were well educated, they knew what they were talking about. The problem was they could not see the law diminishing. So this man was there and Jesus is like, you're not far. Why would he answer him in that? Well, my title to my message to you this morning is, you're almost there. You're almost there. And I still, I don't have no great revelation of when the Lord's coming back. So I'm not talking about we're almost there. I'm talking about wherever you're standing at this morning. Whatever you're going through in your, in your lifestyle. Whatever's happened to you. Whatever family situation or crisis has come upon you, whatever struggles you've been going through, whatever things that have come against you, that has challenged you, that has troubled you, that has uh, 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 made you doubt yourself. Uh, uh, listen, there's not a doubt. If you believe in God and you've been attending this church uh, for the last six months to the last five years, there's not now the word of God has spoken to you, taught you, and you understand that you can come through and you are going to conquer and that your situation is nothing compared to your God. And let me tell you that this morning is no different. God has come to tell you uh, that you are almost there because this scribe uh, uh, began to make a transformation because he believed. The Bible teaches us if we believe on the name of the Lord. First John uh, or John chapter 1 says uh, that as many as believe he gave power. Power to become. Power to become. You, you ever been in that situation at work or, or, or in your life somewhere that where you had to know somebody to get something done? I do when I have tickets. I got to find the power. Somebody can change the situation. Amen? Maybe it wasn't your ticket. Because I know there's some in the house that's right there with me now. <laughs> I ain't going to mention no names, but she sings in the choir. <laughs> Had to take an opportunity while it's available. <laughs> you always want to go to that power because you know that they can influence. You know that they can make a difference. You know that they can change the outcome. So here we, I, I come to you saying that you're almost there because when you begin to believe and when you get steered up in your spirit and you begin to quote what the Lord says and you begin to bring up the word of God that is inside of you, that has been down there and, and, and it's sick. They're waiting on your use of it. Uh, the word doesn't come through here. Yeah, you faith cometh by hearing, but it goes down deep, way down deep. And it begins to say, Paul said one time, said, steer up that thing that is on the inside of Steer up that word. This scribe knew the word of God. He knew Isaiah. 
knew uh, Psalms. He knew he knew uh, Daniel. He knew all the scribes uh, uh, that was printed on and. He- he read and studied, and he began to quote the word of God. And Jesus backed up and said, you're almost there, buddy. You're almost, oh, all you got to believe. Maybe you're here this morning, and you have not fully committed yourself to serving an almighty God. You are almost there because why? To tell you that you can be saved. You can be an overcomer. You can be adopted into the family of God. You can become a Christian. You can become a follower of Jesus Christ. Why? Just because you hear the word. You're almost there. Somebody in your situation. Whether it be your job. Whether it be your family. Hmm. Ooh, wow. Whether it be your health issue, you're almost there. You're believing, but somewhere in there you're torn between being that scribe and being that follower of Jesus. There's a spirit that comes in there that makes us doubt, uh, well, what if I go up there and it doesn't happen? Oh, let me tell you, that's not the Spirit of God. What if I go up there and I I, I don't get what I'm asking for? That's not the Spirit of God. What you got to do is just like the scribe did. He began to and speak the Word of God. And Christ recognized in him what was there. He's like, oh, buddy, you're, uh, you're right there. You are almost in the kingdom. Notice that Jesus did not just identify it as you are almost my follower. You are almost my believer. Notice that Jesus didn't, didn't, uh, didn't play the power game or play the I am king of Israel or, or any of those things because remember, he's still flesh. He's still from Nazareth. He, is, uh, he remains uh, 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 the, 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 the son of Joseph, the son of Mary. He didn't play that of, wow, now that you know who I am, bow down. Kind of like we would when we get that power. When I use my sources of power and it's all over with, I'm like, yeah. Then I get get cocky about it, amen? I get, yeah, I knew that. I did that, yeah. Jesus didn't do that. In fact, Jesus referred to him almost being a kingdom. What is a kingdom? It's big, right? It's more than your house. It's more than your farm. It's more than, it's a broader. God said, you're almost in unlimitedness of God. And that's probably not proper grammar, but that's as good as it gets. You're almost in blessings upon blessings upon blessings. You're almost to the place to where I can't even describe to you what's coming your direction. This is more than a city. This is more than a moment. This is more... Good day. Uh, This is more uh, than Calvary. This is more than the birth. This goes back from creation and is going to go through the end. That's the kingdom of God. When you begin to read about the the anointing that takes place uh, through God's people, when they hear the word of God and they react to the word of God, then you understand the kingdom of God because it goes uh, it's it goes from the garden and it goes throughout the world and it goes to a new Jerusalem coming about. That's the kingdom of God. It goes beyond our sight. 
Jesus is saying, you're about to enter in. You're this close. Why would he tell him that? Remember, Jesus is a discerner of the Spirit. He, he not only sees and hears that this man is in love, that this man has had a, is starting to transform just by, by understanding more. He's like, you're right. Jesus like, all I told you was what you already knew. Nothing new did he give him. See, God is not, God is not here to present you with uh, this great gift that, ooh, it's uh, unknown. And uh, Jesus said, the way you know. We already know. You already understand. Whether or not you've been in church in the last 20 years, you understand uh, just by the Spirit of the Lord that is in you what is truth. This man fleshly had a, had a battle going on between, distinct, uh, distinguishing between traditional law of Moses and the school that he got to and everything and crammed down his throat and everything that was in his time was good. Now he's having to transform and he's not even realizing it because why? He's in the presence of Jesus. Jesus has a way of bringing up in you the things that's already there. He's, uh, he's, uh, he has this thing about reaching on the inside of you and causing you to bring forth that love, causing you to recognize the compassion. Did this man begin to speak great words? He was preaching, in my opinion, to the Lord. Well, has I said, Master, this is good stuff. Jesus like, go, boy, go. You're on it. You're almost there. Paul one time uh, shared his testimony with the king Agrippa in the book of Acts. Uh, and they called him crazy and they called him mad. And they wanted to put him. Paul said, I'm not mad. I'm excited. I know people won't come hear me preach because I get mad. That preacher gets mad. I'm not mad. I'm, I'm trying to work on it. I'm excited. Why? Because I'm excited you're almost there. That you're here in the house of God. We have the word of God. We have the music of God. We have the setting of God. God's approval. He sanctified, sentified this place. And, and, and yes. And you're here. And I'm here. And God is saying, uh, you're almost there. Not because you came, but because of what's on your heart, what's on your mind, what, what you believe this morning. Your flesh may be pulling at you saying, you need to go back out and, and engage in the, the sins of the world. Uh, and and, and there's, uh, the Bible says there is joy in our season. Pleasure. But God has called you here according to your purpose, and he's, good. he's put you in a place where freedom reigns in this place. And he's put you in the position to where now that it's your choice to speak into your life. That's why it's called repentance. God doesn't speak that for you. God didn't pray for Brother Danny and say, here, I'm going to pray for you, and you're going to be saved. God didn't pray for me. I didn't even know how to pray. And I was alone. And I was just like, God, man, if you can hear me, I really, really need you. Something took place in a church service, and I can't get rid of it. Now I want to surrender to it because I like it. That's where the scribe was at. Man, he was standing in the presence of God, and he began to just speak great and he began to make sense not only did he understand but he was understood Jesus discerned the spirit and said man you are almost 
there. You're not far. Paul began to speak, and he began to give his testimony. Paul wasn't even speaking of the Word of God. He wasn't preaching at that point. He was just testifying. He testified so strongly they wrote it in red in the book of Acts after Christ. Tell me we don't have authority. Tell me we are not Christ-like. Tell me we don't represent. When we speak outside of the church walls, it ought to be written in red on the hearts of those that are hearing. It ought to be power. It ought to be. It ought to be the words of Christ. Listen, this man began, uh, 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 Paul began to speak. He's like, oh, man. Man, let me tell you, King, this man, he, he shone a light around me, and he spoke with a great voice, and, and, and the people around me heard it. Have we invited somebody to our to be around us to hear God lately? Come, let me let me let me let you hear the word of God. How am I going to do that? You better read the last few verses of Matthew. Because it tells us, it commissions us to do so. But listen, maybe you're here. And you have it fully committed. You've not been fully persuaded. And I'm getting there. As, as Paul, man, he was standing up. And, the, and the, 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 the see back then, they had the constables. They had the power, which now we have sheriffs. And we've kind of almost done away with our constables. But then, a constable was kind of like a sheriff in town. And he kept saying, you're a madman. Man, if he had one of them things they got today, poof, Paul would be twitching. And, I mean, it, it shocked him. Paul got excited. You know what happens when you get excited from a lawman? You're going down. Paul said, I'm not mad, king. You know what? What did he tell the, what did he tell the king? You know I'm telling the what? Truth. King said, Paul, almost. I, I'm with you, my brother, but I cannot leave. Uh, I, my former companions, I cannot leave my throne of which I've, uh, I've inherited through uh, a royalty. I cannot get, I can't change my mind because I will not please the people. I can't change my ways uh, because uh, it will jeopardize my position. I can't give in because uh, I can no longer hang out with royalty. Uh, because I know what I'm doing is wrong. I, my goodness, I know what I'm doing. It may not, it may not look bad. It may look nice to a lot of people, but it's wrong in the eyes of God. Because I'm not loving the Lord thy God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all the knowledge, with all my mind. I'm not giving him what he needs to be given. I know he came. I know he died I know it was for the remissions of my sins almost thou hast persuaded me the anointing Paul is upon you the time is right time is perfect and I know what I need to do but I'm in that almost maybe you're here and you're in that almost maybe you're here and you're in that position of going, man, I know i got to do better than this. I know I can't leave my life like this. I know that I, if, if, if the Lord come back tonight, I know that I would not make it in. I would not make it in to the, the kingdom of God. I know there's greater things that I can accomplish. Let me tell you something. I, I, uh, from the youth uh, to the oldest. Uh, uh, there is a purpose for you. According to God. There's a purpose for you. Uh, have you found your purpose? Uh, have you found your place? Uh, have you found your calling? Have you found the anointing? Have you found the, the knowledge? Have you found the wisdom? Have you found the promise? Uh, do you understand that God is with you? He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. 
Do you know that the Lord is always with you? He is more than a conqueror when he's with you. And you can conquer all things. Listen, do you know that you are created in a design, in an image, that you can go forth? And if it's cow, it may not be hanging on a cross, but if it's a difficult situation, it is your Calvary, and you can conquer it. You're not far because you're here. And if you're here, you're in the presence of God. I pray that you understand that by now. That when we gather and assemble ourselves, it's not because of we're getting new carpet and the pews are gone. It's because that we are in the presence of an almighty God. That's why a lot of people get wrapped up and, 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 and I know we still have some issues here with all that praise music and all the hymn music. It, I could care less what kind of we have. If it gets me in the presence of God, I'm with it. I get me there. Get me to the place to where I can worship. Or, or, or the song that Brother Matt sang sometimes. Some uh, take me past the altar. Get me into the holies of holies. Get me there. It doesn't matter how well you sing or how much you know the song or don't know the song. It doesn't matter if the song words are up there or not. Just get me to the place where I can understand. I can recognize my power and my strength. Get me there. What about you this morning? What are you battling with? What are you struggling with? What are your temptations and how, how, how much are they dictating your, your life? What about your physical conditions? Have you prayed about them? Have you prayed over them? Have you stepped out on faith and, and said, I'm going forward and getting prayer? A lot of people think, well, some people didn't get this or that, that. I probably won't either. How do you know if you don't ever ask? Jesus said you have not because you ask not. I know that every time that somebody comes up, and, and, and I can't give the reason why, but I know that for a fact that we get people that come up, get prayed, and they don't get healed. They have to have surgery or they have to have treatment or that. Don't ask me why. My faith is strong enough to know they can get it here. Why? I don't know. Someday we will know. But let's get back to what is important this morning. Is you're almost, almost, almost. You're, you're, you're not far from the kingdom of God. Which opens up. You know what? I, one of the most things that I love about the kingdom of God is what Jesus told him. He said, my peace I give to you. I love having peace when I know that everything is wrong. When I know that everything is, I love that peace of knowing why could I feel so good in such a horrible situation. Because Jesus said I could. He said, it would passeth all understanding. My, 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 church. Have we got the concept that knowing that we control, we do have the power. We sing the song, but we don't even believe it. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Do we, do we even believe it? Or is it a feel-good song? Ooh, speak the name of Jesus. Kind of like the cartoon with the Lion King. The church goes, Jesus. Ooh, say it again. <laughs> Jesus, ooh. Yeah. But it's a moment. But the guy goes, he quits saying it, and he goes, he's right behind me, ain't he? And he wasn't ready to turn around and face him. He wasn't ready to turn around and look. Because let me, t let me tell you something really quick right here. 
that we don't understand. When we're not ready to face the Lord and we turn around, we're seeing the wrath. But if you're ready to face the Lord, man, it's the love. It's, it's the love. Listen, God loves you no matter what, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've done, no matter how you got to where you're at right now. Let me expand on one thing. Jesus is standing before you saying, come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. You excite him when you show up to church. You excite him when you read your word. You excite him when you have a thought of, man, I've got to get my life straightened out. I've got to do better. Jesus is saying, you're almost there. You're, you're not far. You're believing, but you're not putting motions to it. Or you're, you're doing the motions, but you're not believing in one way or the other. But he's saying, come on. He got excited for the scribe. <laughs> Let me ask you this. It goes on to say that Jesus, he told him, he said, how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? That was a question. For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, the Lord said to my Lord, sit on the right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself called him Lord. And whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. Gladly. You know what Jesus pretty much told him, why would you refer to me? As a son when, of David when David said, I'm Lord. But the whole thing was in a, how would you put it, sophisticated question. Jesus pretty much asked him, who do you say I am? But he had to put it in a arrogant, in a trying question so they'd comprehend it. say I am Peter said thou art Christ well has thou said why because all you got to do is confess it all you got to do is just speak it. All you got to do is believe it. Peter didn't go read a book and Peter didn't go back and, and go to theology or, 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 or none of these other classes to understand Chronicles and, 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 and First, Second Kings and Isaiah. He didn't go back to that. He just said, I know who you are because I feel you. This scribe that began to get excited, he was feeling the presence of God. And it causes you to look at things differently. Right now, if you don't know the Lord, you are starting to see a compassionate, a loving, a kind. You are starting to understand that it's all about you right now. If you're here lost and you don't know Jesus, I don't matter right now. The, the, the praise team, they don't matter right now. The deacons, they don't matter. The other preachers, they don't matter. Right now, you are, you are just experienced the road to Damascus that Paul was on. And the spotlight was on him. The light shone around him. And he fell to his knees. And Paul didn't have to ask who it was. He did, but he, told, he answered his own question. What would thou have to do with me, Lord? Wow. So you know who it is calling. You understand who it is that's, that's, that's grabbing your heart, that's pulling at you, saying, come on, come join me. Come and, and, and be in my kingdom. Come. And I'll show you things that you didn't imagine. Listen, I, I, there's one thing I love about the Lord is when I feel like I'm never loved anymore, man, I began to speak to Jesus and whoo. 
then I feel about that talk. Amen. Because I know that it was just a just a, a, a spirit. Listen, Jesus loves you so much this morning. The Bible says it so plainly. It, it doesn't matter what interpretation you have, what, uh, what Bible you use. It says one thing correctly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Wow. We're coming up on Christmas and everybody's worried about the Christmas story. But can we read John 3, 16 and learn the greatest gift of life? <laughs> what do you think about Christmas? Most people tell you Luke or, or, or Matthew, the Christmas story. Uh-uh. John 3, 16. I opened my gift and there was life. Life more abundantly. Life more abundantly. Does that mean I'm going to have a six-bedroom, three-bath, four-car garage, pool in the back mansion because I became a Christian? That's not abundance. <laughs> That's not abundance. Abundance is when you just enjoy. You have more life in you than what you know what to do with. That's life. But can you accept that this morning? And my message to you is you're almost there. Somebody needed a healing this morning. You're almost there. You got to believe. You have to pray. You have to begin to seek. Look, go look in the Bible. What was her name? Hannah. Hannah was barren. And man, it was embarrassing. Because in those days as a wife, if you didn't have a, if you wasn't having babies, you was diseased and you were sick and you you just didn't belong. I never did understand that concept, but thank God for grace, amen. <laughs> wow. Of course I had an issue with all the girlfriends or they called them concubines, but Jeez. But Hannah, she began to shut out the persecution. She began to, to distance herself from her surroundings, her household. She began to focus on the one thing, her husband and what she, how she could better serve. Wow. Imagine that concept. If we are the bride of Christ... What we could focus on is the groom and how we could better serve. And she began to pray. She went into a temple. She began to pray so hard that words was coming out, but her mouth wasn't moving. Now, Eli is like, whoo, girl, you're drunk. Come on. It's okay sometimes to be false accused. As long as you got the works to back it up. It's okay to take a little persecution. Sometimes, listen, I, I'm your pastor. Let me tell you this right now. Sometimes I'm not going to understand you. I won't understand you. I'll be like, what do they think? Why did they say that? Because why? I'm not in that spirit. But sometimes you get by yourself and you get with the Lord. He's going to create in you. Different effects that people are not going to understand. That priest Eli, he's like, Shh, man, why'd you even come in here in this condition? Why, you're, girl, why'd you have that much wine? She's like, please. Like some of you do me, roll your eyes and. <laughs> That's okay, you can laugh. Please, pastor, you don't understand. But she conceived. You know why she conceived? She said, God, I'm going to give this child to you. I'm going to raise him for you. Oh, God's like, what a concept. I'll take you up on it. I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll go there. So my point is, are you asking? Are you seeking? Are you looking for, are you trying to find 
If you're miserable, why be miserable? I guess God just wants me to be miserable. No, he don't. If God called me to be miserable, I'd have never answered my call. Because I was that anyway. I had miserable down to an art. People say, well, being a Christian's confusion. God's not the author of that. We're the confusion. We make it complicated. What about you this morning? Are you almost there? See, uh, uh, this is different for me. Usually when I get fired up in the spirit, I want to hang off the ceiling fan. But, but God's calmed me down. Because I feel this movement of God just moving right now. I feel power. I feel drawings. I feel, I feel like people could just lay down some stuff. And not pick it up again. And you're going to be set free from it. So as you stand this morning and as they come get us a song. I ask you. What, what, what do you got going on? What is it this morning? Can we come and and let the Lord have his way? Or are we going to keep splitting it, dicing it, cutting it, saying, Lord, I'll give you this part, but I'm going to hang on to this. God, I'll, I'll give you this, but I can't let this go. The song they uh, sometimes sing is, I Surrender All. But right now, you need to focus on one thing. And if the Lord is passing by us this morning, which he is, you need to, say, you need to tell him, Lord, pass me not. Don't pass me by, God. But the blind man that the Lord walked by him, saw him sitting in the ditch and kept walking. But until he confessed, until he called out, the Lord would have went on. Why? Because it takes the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed. How, how, how big is that grain of mustard seed? Let me tell you in a way you'll understand. Lord, I need you. That's your mustard seed. That's your mustard seed. As they sing, if you got a need this morning, if you're lost this morning, come up here. Don't remain lost.